What's up YouTube? It's your boy Anime Princess and today we're going to be going over my beginner friendly and budget friendly charge stacking spark hierophant. This is a jack of all trades build that can do all non uber bosses. It can kill the feared, it can delve fairly deeply as well as doing any sort of generic mapping content. Now there are three big constraints I put upon myself while putting together this beginner friendly build. The first one was I wanted it to be cheap. So I aim to make this as close to 10 divine as possible. Now there might be some luxury suggestions like watcher's eyes that can push the cost closer to 20 divine, but you should expect to spend around 10 divine to put this together. The second constraint was this uses almost exclusively easy to get uniques with no corrupted implicits. Therefore, it is incredibly fast and easy to grab all the pieces off trade to put it together yourself. Now, the third big constraint was I didn't want people to say this is like patched together with the Wildwood Ascendancies. So I'm going to make this standard viable. This does not use any Wildwood Ascendancies at all. Now, there will be a section later in the video where I do go over how you can further refine and upgrade the build by adding in some charms from the Ascendancy, but it is not needed. And you can go ahead and build this in standard or in future leagues without using any league mechanic. Now to touch on this build's strengths, I think a large part of it is simply just having a well-rounded character that fits in with our self-imposed constraints. Having almost all uniques with no corrupted implicits on them means the build is guaranteed to have a predictable and stable price. And by ignoring the league mechanic, it means that you'll be able to do this in future leagues comfortably it also means that you'll be able to make a more powerful character than we're displaying in the POB because every league is going to have some sort of borrowed power, including this one. So you're going to be able to make a stronger character than we're demoing in the videos and when we go through the POB. That's a big strength. The other strength would be I think we have quite a lot of damage for the price. We have almost 5 million damage per spark bolt and sparks can hit at max four times per cast, which means we're getting a damage range between five to roughly 19 million. Realistically, it's gonna be somewhere in the middle, but that's just your expected damage range. That's pretty comfortable for a hit-based crit build at this amount of budget. Moving on to the build's weaknesses, we are an evasion-based character that is not evade capped unless we press Vol Grace. This means you are going to want to save your Vol Grace for particularly difficult encounters, such as Soul Eater Rare or some Enraged Monster, maybe the Mat Boss. If you don't have your Vol Grace up, you could get one shot by these enemies. Thankfully, with the current League mechanic, you can easily get Evade Capped with a few budget charms, such as either Banner has free reservation or the mana reservation on a charm. This will let you use Dread Banner. And Dread Banner, in conjunction with a charm that gives us chance to blind enemies, should boost up the character to evade cap or at least extremely close to evade cap. While we're on the topic of defenses, we could go over the rest of the defensive layers. We do have Fizz damage taken as Ellie to help offset when something goes through the evasion. So we have Craft on the Body Armor prefix craft on the helmet prefix and we're using a taste of hate as well all of this shift physical damage onto our elemental resistances i'd say those are all three pretty important things you don't want to skip or pretty easy to get thankfully we're also 99 percent spell suppression with the spell suppression is lucky mastery realistically speaking in this game when you're dying to spells it's probably when you have low spell suppression and you're dying to many spell hits in quick succession. The notion that you need to either have 100% spell suppression or 0% spell suppression is largely wrong. So we'll have a roughly 91% suppress cap without that mastery. And you could hit 100% spell suppression quite easily. You could get a boot corruption if you chose to. You could also get suppression on charms. So there are various solutions, but I think for the purpose of an accessible and a standard league character, I'm just going to stick with the 99% suppression with the Lucky Mastery. 
Another big defensive layer is the Graven's Secret Belt, which provides us with absorption charges. What absorption charges do is they give us an enormous amount of energy shield recoup. It's roughly 25% energy shield per second. This feels especially great because we're using Eldritch Battery combined with Mind Over Matter. So our energy shield is really important in fulfilling both our mana cost as well as protecting our life pool. We have enough energy shield sustain that even without this huge bonus from the belt, we shouldn't have any issues casting our spells. However, having this immense amount of energy shield constantly coming back to us is a very nice extra layer. Now there are more defensive layers such as we have ghost shrouds which provide us big spikes of energy shield when we take hits. We have some life regen, energy shield regen, we do have endurance charges for more fizz damage mitigation. The list goes on. So yeah, these are our defensive layers and my suggestion going forward with this build, as I mentioned earlier, would be to try and focus on getting evade tapped with Volgrace turned off. And you should be doing that with the charms if you're doing it in this league. Now we're looking at the cost breakdown, AKA Spark Hyro shopping list. Here we're going to go over the gear, the jewels, the skill gems, as well as some miscellaneous stuff you're going to be spending your currency on. There's a baseline cost of 10.4 divines. However, I'm going to be providing some reasoning as well as context behind why we're picking these items as well as the roles we want to target. So if you want to spend a little bit more to get some better roles, my current POB is based on roughly 17 divines spent. So in order of cost, the most expensive thing for gear is Badge of the Brotherhood. This item, the rolls don't matter at all. However, you probably want to bless Orb the Implicit Sop because we are going to be squeezed pretty tight for dexterity as well as strength. So just get the cheapest one you can get. This gives us a lot of damage because we're power charge stacking, and this gives us a lot of frenzy charges equal to our max power charge. Next up, we have Death Rush. This is mapping only. It doesn't do anything for bosses, hence why we have a gearing swap for bosses down here, which will remove this. This is really good for mapping. It gives us some recovery on kill, and we're going to be killing a lot of stuff because Spark just covers the whole screen. It also gives us Adrenaline, which gives us a lot of damage. It gives us a lot of fizz damage mitigation. The roll on here, that matters is adrenaline. Try and get at least two seconds. I spent a little bit extra to get a three second adrenaline roll. Third up is the Rolakesh boots. Now I aim to get some with pretty good resistances for 60 chaos. A budget one would be 20 chaos. Gives us cold res, chaos res. And this is sort of the crux behind the build. We're always gonna count as having the max number of all our charges. We're charge stacking for power charges. However, there's some downsides to Malachi's loop in that we'll lose our power charges when we hit full. This sort of works around that so we never lose our power charges. You will see the power charges going up and down in the top left corner, but in actuality, you are always at max power charges because you have these boots. The other downside for Malachi's loop is you get shocked. Now this isn't avoided from the boots, but we do go ailment immunity so we are avoiding that downside as well. Next up is Taste of Hate. The only role that matters on Taste of Hate is Fizz damage from hits taken as cold instead. This is purely defensive for our character. However, we don't have any armor, so we're evasion based and when something goes through, we want to mitigate the fizz damage that goes through. So we do have endurance charges to mitigate that but we also want to shift some more of it onto our Eli res because we have 75% Eli res. So that's what this is accomplishing. I think it's worth paying the 55 chaos to get 15% instead of 10%, which would be the 10 chaos. Next up, Anathema. This is a huge source of our damage. It gives us a curse limit equal to our power charges. We do have an insane amount of power charges. However, we're only using four curses because it's just, it's pretty hard to fit in more than that. However, you could go for some more curses on say like glove corruption, etc. The sky is the limit for however many curses you can fit onto this build. 
because anathema is going to give us a curse limit of more than we can use. We have a six link here that's going to cast our curses through Arcanist Brand. Right, next up is Void Battery. This is another power charge stacking item. Um, the role that matters most on here is the cast speed, although none of these roles matter too much, so you could just pick up whatever you can afford there. 40 Chaos. Thunder Fist. This is a pseudo six link for our spark. We have our four link in here. It's just 30C, very budget way to get a second six link. Graven's Secret is a power charge stacking belt. We talked about earlier, it is giving us a defensive layer of absorption charges. I'm not going to talk about that because we already talked about defensive layers. It's uh, 25 chaos. Malachi's Loop. This is the shield with a bunch of downsides that are all being mitigated. And the upside of two maximum power charges as well as a bunch of energy shield is great. Next up is Aziri's Promise. Now, this gives us some lifesteal while mapping because we don't have lifesteal as it is. You could opt to use a Doriani's Invitation Belt for lifesteal. This gives us just permanent lifesteal. However, I think the upside of this Graven Secret is too big to put this on. So we're just getting a lifesteal from Aziri's Promise. And really, this isn't too needed because we are also getting a lot of recovery from the Death Rush in a mapping situation. We do have two pieces of rare gear. The first one being six link evasion energy shield hybrid body armor. Status scar is the best one. I would go for eye level 85. And these cost roughly 50 chaos. You should just spam essence of greed in my opinion until you get some good modifiers. What you're looking for is hopefully spell suppression in the suffix. If you don't get spell suppression in the suffix, you could get it through charms i suppose you also want to have open prefix to use gravitius craft fizz damage from hits taken as fire and lightning we are evasion based defenses which means when something gets through we want to shift that fizz damage onto ellie as much as possible and this is a great way to do it it is really important for survivability now, I got pretty lucky on this. I also got another prefix for evasion and energy shield. And those are both pretty good as well. So that has a cost of 50 chaos for the base. And I said roughly 30 chaos of spamming the essences. As for the implicits, it doesn't really matter. I think wrath effect is pretty good damage. Crit multi is pretty good damage. You could go for a lot of stuff in there. Not too important. The other rare piece of gear is a helmet that has fractured spell suppression or fractured chaos res. Uh, I got mine for I think around 10 chaos, but I just said, you know, it might be up to 40. And we're going to roll for the one we're missing. So since I got fractured spell suppression, I got T2 spell suppression, I just rolled the essence that gives chaos res until the rest of the modifiers looked okay. So this helmet has the chaos res from the essence. We got some intelligence, which, you know, that's not mandatory, but that's just a little bit extra energy shield, which is nice to have. We got a bunch of evasion. We didn't get life, but you know what? It's fine. The last prefix has to be fizz taken as fire. That's more important than life because again, we're trying to just convert that physical damage into elemental damage because we're not going to be taking too much of it. Most of it's going to be evaded. But when we do take that damage, we got to shift it out. So make sure you craft those two prefixes. The helmet prefix, you have to unveil from Corel. Body armor, unveil from Gravisius. Moving on to jewels. I do have a luxury item here. It is a watcher's eye with chance to evade when you have grace. It is going to cost you roughly five divines. So, you know, going for a 10 divine budget, you got to cut that. You'll be a little bit more squishy. But this is going to be one of your first upgrades you make to help push you up to the 95% evade cap. The next jewel is a militant faith with high, dump, high Templar Dominus as the character on it. 
This gives us this node right here called Inner Conviction, which gives us 3% more damage per power charge. So that's a lot more damage. I think it's like 30% more damage for us. And gain power charges instead of frenzy charges does not matter for us because Badge will still give us our frenzy charges based on our power charges, and we are going to have max power charges because of those boots. So this is incredibly important for damage. The next jewel is Immutable Force. This is just the stun immunity jewel. And the final jewel is the last rare piece of gear we need. It's just any jewel that you can find that has Corrupted Blood. Now we are kind of low on strength and dex, so you might want to get a Corrupted Blood jewel that has some strength or dex on it, depending on your situation. The last three items are skill gems. I'm gonna ignore most of the skill gems because most of them are just standard stuff you can buy from Lily, but there are three ones that are special gems. The first one is an Enlightened Three, which costs roughly three divines. Frost Blink, a Wintry Blast costs around a divine, and Awaken Lightning Pen costs ADC. So that's what we're spending for our skill gems. On to the last little bit of gear you gotta spend. You gotta get the long shot anoint on your badge of the brotherhood. It's opalescent, crimson, teal oil, and that runs you around 25 chaos. Now we have the gear swap for bossing, which again we mentioned earlier, but you take off Death Rush, put on Volico's sign, that's it. Now you can boss on it. And if you're gonna fight Uber Aziri, Uber Aziri has a uh, a huge amount of reflect so that means you're going to want to put Sybil's Lament onto the left ring socket and you might want to get Life Leech and you don't have Valico's sign so you're just going to put on Doriani's belt these are one chaos and 20 chaos for the Doriani's belt the Doriani's belt has four different versions make sure you get the one that has lightning damage and you're going to go into your Pantheon to make sure you're expecting the Soul of Yugal because this only gives you 80% reflect immunity. You need the Soul of Yugal to get you all the way to 100%. That's how you do Uber Aziri. All right, that is the rundown for our gear. There's a path of building file in the video description that covers the passive tree as well as our ascendancy choices. However, we're going to give a brief run through in the video as well. So to start off, we grab a Templar and we path out through the bottom grabbing all of these strength nodes because we need the strength anyways to equip our skill gems. The points we take in the starting area for Templar give us much needed dexterity, some cast speed for damage, maximum life, resistances, and damage. It's just all very high value. And then we'll path upwards to grab this life wheel, which opens up the mastery for plus 50 to maximum life. We also want to path down towards skill effect duration Skill effect duration is very nice on Spark because the longer our Sparks last, the more chance they have to hit walls and bounce back onto the boss. And every time a Spark comes back and hits a second time, you're essentially doubling your damage again. So it's a huge more multiplier by increasing our skill effect duration. So we're going to take the mastery that gives us 10% more skill effect duration while we're here. Next up, we're going to grab some energy shield nodes. And this opens up the mastery for 30% of chaos damage does not bypass energy shield. Unless you are very high chaos res, this is a mastery you should be taking. We are a mind over matter build, which states 40% of damage is taken from our mana before life. However, we're also reserving all of our mana. This is useful because we take Eldritch Battery, which makes it so the, the energy shield is protecting our mana and you spend energy shield for our mana costs. If we don't have Mind Over Matter, our energy shield is no longer gonna be protecting us as a defensive layer. So that's why you have to have both. And while we're on this subject, I should talk about the ratio of energy shield to life you wanna have. If you have too little energy shield and you take a really big hit on Mind Over Matter, it's going to completely deplete your energy shield to zero. So if you wanna have it so you, if you're going to get one shot, it's going to take your energy shield to zero and then also kill you, which is like the optimal value. You just multiply your life by 0.66. So for my life pool of 3,128, the optimal energy shield would be 2,064 and I'm at 2,100. So that's pretty close. If you have way too little energy shield, you'll get hit with a really big damage attack like a shaper beam 
and you won't be able to movement skill out of it because you'll have no mana to cast your spells. Technically speaking, you don't have to worry about this ratio because later on when I talk about skill gems, you'll see we have life tap on our frost blink. So there's never going to be a situation where you have no mana and you're just stuck in some huge damage attack. But it's still nice to have that balance if possible. So you should aim for it. Uh, anyways, moving on with the skill tree. Now we're grabbing a power charge because we're power charge stacking. And we're going to grab this militant faith. As I said earlier, it should have High Templar Dominus because it switches the uh, X-Master, which is not what we want, into Inner Conviction, which is a lot of damage. Militant Faith also comes with two extra modifiers. So it's a huge variety of them. If you have extra currency, you could look into making those other ones beneficial to us. But we're only 95 Devotion, so it's really not going to have too much of an impact either way. Moving over, grab Eldritch Battery, as we are talking about earlier. I get these nice critical strike nodes. You don't have to get it at 100%. It's not like Inquisitor where there is some mechanics hinging on you having a crit, but it's still just efficient to go to 100%. We're going to grab Mana Reservation Wheel over here. I like the mastery for 10% increased effect of auras, but if you're low on points, you could skip this. We're going to path down through this Energy Shield Life node to get all the way over to the spell expression nodes over here. This helps us reach pseudo spell expression cap at 99% with the spell express is lucky. I would go for the mastery 50% increased effect of non-damaging ailments when you inflict a critical strike. When you're hitting a boss, there's going to be a little number under his health bar that says your shock effect. You need to increase your effect of non-damaging ailments in order to get this high. The, the limit is 50%, although you could bump it up to 60% if you choose a different mastery here. But I can somewhat reliably get the normal bosses up to 50% shock. So you would just import that down here. Your, your effective shock is 50 if you are reading the number 50 on the enemy bosses. And this just helps you get there. 50% increased effect on all damaging elements. Now we're going to get a value point into Energy Shield Leech. This just helps us with the Eldritch Battery. I like to take Ghost Dance. This is very effective. When you take a hit, it shoots us up a bunch of Energy Shield based on your Evasion rating. I think I'm getting probably around 600 or so. Yeah. And the charges replenish. You have three charges. So that's like... 1800 energy shield before you run out of charges and then you get another one every two seconds now these are just some nice points to get some energy shield a little bit of evasion rating which is nice again it's probably not too mandatory grab power charge down here keep pathing down get some nice life nodes now, as we keep pathing down we get some very high value spell expression nodes out over to inveterate and off to the other side, Piercing Shots is going to give us three Pierce. Pierce is important because without it, as soon as your Sparks hit any enemy, they will disappear. This just keeps them alive so they can hit multiple times. It helps out in any situation, really. And we're going to get some Proj Speed on the Projectile Mastery. And finish things off, going down here for some much-needed decks. Because we're, again, we're really short on decks and strength. And then this just lets us fit in our last jewel. As for the Ascendancy, we are going to path down to Divine Guidance and then go outwards towards Sanctuary of Thought. Sanctuary of Thought gives us uh, a bunch of energy shield, helps us fit in our auras with mana reservation efficiency, and it also reduces the cost of our spells. Conviction of Power is very useful. It gives us four endurance charges and it gives us an extra power charge. And last but not least, Arcane Blessing is just 20% more damage for our Spark. As for the skill gems, let's just start things off with our two six links. So we have our Spark in a Thunderfist Murder Mitt, which gives us socketed gems are supported by level 30 added lightning damage. It's a lot of flat lightning. It also provides 100% increased effect of lightning ailments. And this helps us reach our shock cap quite easily. So we have a regular spark in here, 
we have Awaken Lightning Penetration. The Awaken version gives us chance to inflict lightning exposure, which is quite good for our damage. Faster projectile supports and spell echo support. Awaken spell echo is usually quite expensive, so we're going to skip it here. If you were to add that in, it would give us a chance to do double damage. We attack pretty fast, so we're going to apply a few hits of double damage onto the really tough bosses in the game. And when you do hit double damage, it is also going to inflict a much bigger shock. Now, that's not too important for us because we do have a lot of increased effect of lighting ailments, but if you're going to push further than the normal endgame bosses into really difficult stuff, you would probably want to have an Awaken Spell Echo at that point. As for the Body Armor 6 Link, this is an Arcanist brand, as you can see right here. We just throw that on the really tough enemies. You're only going to do this if the enemy isn't dying really fast. So most likely just bosses like Shaper, maybe really tanky rares. It's going to apply all of our curses. We have a curse limit of 10. However, I only have four curses in the body armor. We have Conductivity, Ellie Weakness, Sniper's Mark, and Punishment. And this is all linked to an inspiration to lower the cost of everything in here. Because this Arcanist brand is going to be casting all these curses. It is going to be quite mana intensive. However, with the Graven's Belt, we do have an insane amount of Energy Shield recoup. So you could try this out without inspiration and just throw in a fifth curse. It would likely feel just fine. And also, you can go for Corruptions on gear that gives you Curse on hit just to get more curses. Really, you're not going to be able to hit 10 curses. So just fit in as many as you want. Moving on to our Boots. This is where we have our Auras, Enlighten, connected to Zealotry, which is good damage. Purity Elements, which gives us Ailment Immunity. And Vol of Grace. And we're going to use that Vol of Grace when we're fighting a particularly tough enemy. In the shield, we have Calling Strike support linked to Faster Casting and Frostblink of Wintry Blast. But we also have Life Tap linked to regular Frostblink. And the reason for this, I have my Frostblink Wintry Blast on space and the other one on my Q button. Let's just demo this. Frostblink of Wintry Blast is just really good for traveling through areas. But the problem is it's not instant. Whereas Frost Blink is literally instant, and we also have it on Life Tap, as we explained earlier, so that no matter what your mana situation is, you'll be able to do an instant movement skill to escape something. Got Steel Skin on left click. Now with Steel Skin, I like to make it so it's uh, always used without moving. And Frost Shield. Again, you just pop that up. It eats away some of your energy shield, but your energy shield will come back real quickly, and this provides really good defensive layer. It buffs our critical strike chance as well. The last three points are our Divine Blessing. So Inspiration linked to Divine Blessing and Wrath. So when we press our Wrath, it gives us Wrath for 18 seconds. It's just one button three times per minute. It's not too bad. Quite useful. There's a lot more damage. Free aura. And that is the setup. So while you're mapping, you'll probably just be holding down Frostblink or Wintry Blast. When you get in the middle of a bunch of stuff, you start casting. Every once in a while, you can press Wrath. Honestly, you might not have to press Wrath or Arcanist Brand for most of the map. It's mostly if you're like right about to fight a tough essence or something, just Throw down all your stuff, then open it up, and you'll do way more damage than just the regular spark. But you don't have to feel like you have to press these buttons all the time, because most trash isn't going to need that extra damage to die. All right, I think that's a wrap. Hope you enjoyed the video. End of Vine, Charge Stacking, Spark Hyro. I think it's a pretty good build to recommend to a new player, to a friend getting into the league. Just throw them 10 Divines, hand them the video. They should be good to go. Um, if you have any questions, you can drop by my Twitch at twitch.tv slash anime princess. Also, I do have an active Discord of over 2,000 Spark enthusiasts. So if you're playing this build, if you have some questions and I'm not streaming, or you just want to share your progress, you know, feel free to join that Discord. Lots of people 
more than willing to talk spark in there as for the youtube channel we do have a lot of resources on there for spark now this is a pretty self-contained guide so you don't have to go looking for extra info but if you want you know we've got it crit spark content playlist this is sort of a hold your hands from beginning to end of the league using spark inquisitor however there are a lot of videos that are just universally useful for example one that explains transfigured gems i don't think you really need to touch those but you know this will explain their purpose um you know there's spark damage optimizing is always a good one to watch it just explains the damage yeah i don't know feel free to venture into that if you want either way that was the video and i'll catch you in the next one peace